welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. Hi, everybody. This is episode 116 or 117, depending on how you count it, <laughs> of The Near Memo uh, with uh, David, Mike, and me, Greg. And we talk about local search, social commerce, technology, AI, privacy, and all kinds of things. And welcome to any new listeners who are just listening for the first time or are new to this podcast from uh, Last Week in Local or wherever you may be from. We're glad to have you. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, review timing, when to solicit reviews. We're going to be talking about the um, sort of strange phenomenon of no results in Google's SGE search generator, generative experience, and then also, of course, Vision Pro, which was released this week at, or, or announced this week at WWDC23. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's early, so I'm entitled to stumble over, uh, you know, a few words here. So, Mike, that's you. Take it away. When, sure. well, when example, is the best? When is the best time to ask for a review? Well, so the common wisdom, and while we were, I was working at Gather Up, was always as soon after the transaction as you could. Um, although I went to a doctor the other day and literally as I walked out the door, I got a review solicitation from that doctor, um, which struck me as like, hold it. I haven't even assessed what you said yet, let alone I'm in a position to give you a review. Was that on your phone? It was on my phone. Yes. Yeah. And so the two researchers, one from the University of Arizona, the other from the University of Nevada, did some very interesting research with two e-commerce companies. One was clothing. I don't know what the second one was. And they cr created four cohorts uh, where they either 50% of them were no solicitation, 50% of them were solicitation, day one, day five, day nine, and day 14. And what they found, which I thought was fascinating, that on day one, uh, and what one of the things they saw was uh, on unsolicited situations, um, the half-life was about five days. So they got 12% mm -hmm. reviews to start. On day five, they got 6% reviews. On day nine, they got uh, about 3%, 3% and about 1% on day 13. So it was uh, half-life about five days. Uh, interestingly, in the cohort that got, uh, in the first two cohorts, people who were asked reviewed at about half of the rate of native reviewers. However, mm -hmm. out nine and 14 days, the people who were asked rate reviewed at almost twice the rate of native reviewers. So it was a fascinating thing. And they hypothesized, and they said this was particularly true with younger customers. They hypothesized that there was a certain reaction to a very quick review ask. They, people bristled at the loss of freedom, but welcomed at day nine or 13 the reminder. Um, and so they hypothesized that that was sort of why this was happening. But essentially, at least in this e-commerce clothing situation, asking for reviews too quickly reduced, dramatically reduced the volume of reviews by at least half. And asking for them after about nine days and into two weeks mm -hmm. increased the number of reviews. So it really raised the question of, you know, what should businesses do? They point out that it probably varies by product category. You know, if you have yeah. more expensive product category, probably varies by demographic. But I think one of the advice in the article that I thought was valuable was measure what your native rate of reviews is and the timing for them after the sale and start testing some point beyond that average and see where you maximize results. Hmm. It's interesting. I, I think this has to be just incredibly category dependent. I think, you know, if I'm a, a civil lawyer, I ask for the review when I hand the client the check for their settlement, right? right. I mean, uh, or shortly thereafter, I, you know, we just had to have our washing machine repaired. I didn't get a solicitation, but man, somebody should have sent me something the next day when we ran our first load of laundry, you know, that sort of thing. So I think it has to be very, very category dependent. When you get a new piece of clothing, you probably want to wear it out and hear your friends' reactions and that sort of thing. And it's not a, you know, it's not like a, oh my God, this is a life, life transforming event, which even fixing a laundry washing machine is a life transforming event at a, at a micro level. So 
Um, so I would say I think I, I think the, the big takeaway here is what you said at the very end, which is businesses probably should be a B testing this a lot more than they are. I assume that most gather up customers and not to single out gather up any review software customers probably just set it and forget it in terms of when when they actually send the follow up. So and I think something that I saw happen with Podium a lot where Podium trained the review askers to tell people they were going to ask them for review and then ask them. And I, th and I think that's something that if you alert your customers or get a social commitment from them that they are going to review you, I think the response would be different as well. But I do think testing is critical here and not defaulting to just as soon as you can crank the email in or this SMS in, like my experience with the doctor yesterday is like, oh, step back, dude, you know. Well, I, I, what, what I found interesting is that this this sort of overthrows this conventional wisdom, as you as you mentioned, it's like it, it's completely intuitive that the closer, you know, you would think that the closer in time to the service or the transaction, the better the, you know, the fresher the person's memory and the, the more likely they would be to 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 give a review. But I think what this does is it sort of opens the door to to testing or the the recommendation to is to test. And I, I do agree that it's going to be really different by category and cost and other things. I'm not sure we're going to see that research. I mean, that's really fascinating research. You know, what is the difference in star ratings from, you know, one of the variables that isn't isn't looked at is like, are these are the are the unprompted reviews better than the prompted reviews? They did are look the at later that in the research and oh, they, they said did? quality did not vary prompted or unprompted. They said oh, that's the right. Same. That's right. That's right. But I think I think there are a lot of different variables to test, not only by category, but but impact of uh, on the quality of reviews over time, mm -hmm. et cetera. And I, I don't know if we're going to see anybody do that research. I mean, one of the platforms should definitely do it because. Well, right. One of the platforms should be doing it amongst their own customers and yeah, of course. optimizing all customers in that vertical. So maybe yeah. we can maybe we can um, we can talk to uh, to some of the people we know at you know, Adam or somebody Dorfman at reputation and get them, yeah. get them to do this or one of the platforms He's, because I think it's really interesting. Uh, really We're available for consulting too. Just, just saying. <laughs> that's, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <Anna. laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.